Hello, and welcome to this short video on dissipative forces. In this, we're just going to provide a quick motivation for why we should care, as well as a definition. And it's basically, we're going to answer both of those questions in one fell swoop with this simple statement. So we're going to say a dissipative force is one that converts mechanical energy into thermal energy. And what we mean by this, of course, is mechanical energy is this nice energy that we like to think of as useful in context of Newtonian mechanics. It's our kinetic energy and our potential energy that we know we can exchange between and, you know, we can store the kinetic energy into potential and then get it back whenever we like. Whereas thermal energy is this sort of bizarre wasted energy that we can't really readily convert um, back from. So once you've made thermal energy, you've generated heat and basically that heat is now sort of useless in the context of Newtonian mechanics, you can't do anything with it, and so that's lost energy. And in this context, then, what we're saying is we must have had some kinetic or potential energy, and this dissipative force has taken some of that away to generate the heat, which means that basically the dissipative force is stealing energy from the system. And if you think about the relationship between work and energy, this basically means that a dissipative force must always do negative work. So let's now think carefully about this criteria and see what it means about, say, the force that I apply to push a box. So suppose I've got a box and it's trying to move to the right and I don't want it to, so I'm going to step in front of it and I'm going to push it back towards the left. And as I'm pushing it left, it's still moving to the right, but it is slowing down as a result of me pushing against it. So I'm applying a force to the left, the motion is to the right, that's clearly negative work. So is that, therefore, a dissipative force? Because we said a dissipative force does negative work. But actually, we said more than that. And we said that dissipative forces must always do negative work. So there can be no situation in which I would do positive work. But of course, in this case, I can easily just go over to the other side of the box and push it towards the right if I wanted to, or I could attach a rope and just pull it to the right. So my applied force has that freedom to change its direction and therefore change the sign of the work that it does. It's not a dissipative force. Okay, What is a dissipative force is something that must always do negative work, which means its direction must be such that it always opposes the motion. And so there's a couple of examples that we know that always oppose the motion, and those are things like friction, air resistance, and drag. So, in summary, a dissipative force is one which must always do negative work and hence will extract energy from our system and therefore always has to be acting opposite the motion in order to do that negative work. So that's how you identify them and the reason that we care is obviously this impact that they have on the energy of the system which is that in the presence of a dissipative force, then that system must clearly lose energy over time. Or at least it must lose mechanical energy over time.